Hi everyone and welcome to the French Watch Collector channel. Today on the bench, I have a very special watch. I have a watch actually that was sent by one of the viewers from the channel, on my French channel actually. And uh, he wanted to have this watch restored. So I just got it on the mail and you can see this is this beautiful Gégère Le Coutre. Um, so he told me actually the watch is not working, but we will see a bit later on. Actually the watch is working. Um, he wanted me to do a full restoration without polishing the case. So let's see what we can find inside this watch. We see it's quite dirty. And uh, wow, look at this movement. That's wonderful. Like I love this gold color on the movement. You can see the case back as well, which is a uh, Gégère Le Coutre. And uh, looks like he's missing the second end on the watch. Uh, that's why he probably thinks that the watch was not running. And when I put it on a time grapher, you see the reading is very, very bad. Like a lot of dots everywhere. We need to have normally two straight lines. Uh, so let's see what we can do on this watch and see if we can bring it back to life. Okay, I would like to use this opportunity to tell you that I have a brand new website where actually I'm selling some of the watch that I'm restoring on the channel. You have some links as well with the, with the channel. You can see here some of the watch uh, that I'm selling that I restored previously on the, on the videos. And as well, I propose some service. If you want to service your watch or restore your watch, you can contact me. I just put some price there for, for guidance, but you can contact me and uh, we will figure it out if you, if you want to have to watch restore. Okay, so let's get back to the watch and you can see there straight away, which is a, an automatic bump of movement from uh, Gégère Le Coutre. And you can see there's a bumper. It's not moving at all, yeah? Well, that's a lot of play. Okay, so yeah, there is definitely something wrong there. We'll have to look at it. But this movement, I love the movement from Gégère Le Coutre. So this is a caliber 476 uh, automatic bumper movement. Like I said, you see that uh, this uh, big piece that go back and forth between the two springs there, which is winding the watch. That's why it's written automatic there. You can see on the, on the dial. The dial is not too bad. I quite like the patina. We try to clean it a little bit. I'm um, just aligning the hand uh, to 12 just to remove them. And as well, I will put a link down below in the description. Uh, I have a, a, a group like Orotech created a group on Facebook. If you want to exchange like on uh, on tools, uh, because a lot of people are asking me as well, which tools are you using? Which tools are the best? Which tool I should buy to start? And actually Orotech yeah, had a, a Facebook group and you can put all your questions on there. And uh, my, including myself, a lot of people would be more than happy to, to reply to your question. So go down in the description of the video and go subscribe and uh, join this group on, uh, on Facebook. Yeah. Okay, I just removed the dial. And you can see there, there is a hole with a screw at the bottom because one of the feet, look, one of the feet of the dial is broken. That's not good, yeah. And uh, the previous watchmaker actually made a hole in the dial and hold it with the screw. I don't really like this. Uh, I think there is a better way to do it. We see how we can do it uh, when we put it back together. But uh, yeah, I don't like to have a screw on the, on the dial. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to remove this bridge from the automatic system. And ooh, that doesn't look good, yeah? Wow, look, like, look at the rust on the, on the wheel and actually some of the teeth are broken. You can see it's missing teeth there. Okay, that's not good because this movement are very old and the parts sometimes can be quite tricky to find. Let's see if we can find anything else. Okay, we remove these parts, which is used to make the connection to the main spring there to wind when the bumper is moving. We look at it, we disassemble it later. And we have this big bumper there. Yeah, that's, the, that's not a good news. Just going to remove the bumper there and see if there's any, any more damage. Oh yeah, that's moving a lot as well. Drew looks okay actually underneath, but why why is it moving so much, yeah? Ah, uh, looks like the pivot is broken as well on the other side. Okay, I don't know what happened with this bumper, but yeah, that's quite a lot of damage for, for a bumper, yeah? Just try to put it back in place, but yeah, I can see it's rotating, but it doesn't stay because the pivot is broken. But anyway, some of the teeth are broken, so we need to find a replacement for these parts. We'll have a, I will have a look on uh, on the internet what I can find. Okay, we carry on with the with the disassembly and see if we can find any other issues with this watch. Just remove the balance there, because which is really fragile, so just want to remove it as soon as possible. Removing the power there by holding the click, which is on the side there, which is a funky place to, to hold the click if you want to remove the power. But yeah, that's done. 
And now that the power is removed, we can carry on disassembling the watch, removing the pallet there, this part there, which was where you just removed the bumper that was rotating on top of it on this jewel. There we go, it's quite dirty, yeah, you can see there. Probably a lot of, uh, like, uh, like parts, a lot of uh, metal flakes, if you want, from the, probably from, from the bumper that we just removed, which was broken. Remove this click there. Okay, remove the screw. There is a spring here. Just keep it with this, my tool there with uh, the plastic at the end, just to make sure it doesn't fly away. And I can carry on removing these bridges. And you can see as well, I really love this Gégère Le Coutre movement. They, they are so nice to work on. Like, look at first the color and look at the finish. You have a Côte de Genève on the top. You have some, uh, some finish as well on, on, on the bottom there. It's like, it's so, so nice, like to work on this type of movement. And this movement actually is quite dirty. It's, uh, so yeah, definitely clean it. Uh, I don't know when the last time it was serviced. Probably a long time ago. So definitely need a good clean. Removing this bridge with the center wheel. There we go. And the main spring barrel assembly. Okay, so we are moving on a keyless work here. On the, on the other side, on the die side. And we start removing all the, all the parts, all these little wheels. And I love this spring there, the shape of this spring. So nice, so nice on these movements. Like they made it like probably by hand or with like very, because this movement is probably from like in the 50s, I, I would say. Uh, I don't know, I didn't look at with the serial numbers, the age, but maybe you can find out what's the age of, of this movement. But it's probably like, like I said, in the 50s, maybe late 40s. Um, but yeah, it's with the machining technique that they had. It's unbelievable, the, the shapes that they made with some parts. This is stuck here. Yeah? Actually, I cannot remove the sitting lever screw there. I'm just going to use a screw of a blade just to lift it a tiny bit. Ah, it's very tight, yeah, here we go, that's it. Okay, I'm just going to take the jewels, just to remove any dried up oil or grease. Obviously, I just do it quickly there, but I do it on all the jewels from the from the from the different parts. Disassemble now the shock settings, getting all the jewels out that so we will clean as well in the, in the machine a bit later on. And the one on the balance, which I quite like actually, is this where you lift it and uh, rotate the spring on top. Okay, just disassemble the crown wheel over there, which is underneath the bridge. This spring, I will just leave it in place during cleaning. I'm now going to disassemble it. The main spring barrel, just take out the main spring, just to make sure again that all the parts get clean inside. Oh, that's dirty, yeah. That's, that's why you want to disassemble it and clean everything. Because, yeah, it's sort of automatic movement, so you have probably some uh, graphite grease in it or a special grease. And you can see there is very dirty. Okay, take the part here. Oh, it's tight. Oh, oh, oh my God, everything jump. So yeah, I spent a few time on my knees, but I found all the parts back. And you see, that's a danger with this mainspring. I just slightly release it. And it's so strong that it went out of my hand. Um, so yeah, you need to be really careful with this when you disassemble a mainspring assembly. Okay, I just disassembled all the small screw there. You remember that's a parse that's connected between the bumper and the main spring just to transmit the power. There we go, everything is disassembled again, just to make sure everything get clean the best you can in a in a machine. And we're gonna put all the parts in baskets and uh, this basket will go into the cleaning machine. That's it, all the parts are in, put them in this, and they will go into my cleaning machine. Okay, so we'll clean in three stages. The first one will be uh, a cleaning solution, and we'll have two wrenching stages, and the last one 
would be a drawing. So I would like to use this opportunity to tell you that I have a Patreon page. Um, so if you go on Patreon, you can subscribe to one of the plan. It will help me a lot to support the channel because obviously that takes me a lot of time. This is not my job. It takes me a lot of time and a lot of energy and money to do this video. So if you want to support me, you will get access, a premium access to the video. Like uh, I put them on uh, on Patreon first before I'm putting them on YouTube. And as well, you will get uh, the video without any commercial. So if you want to go and support my channel, go on Patreon, join a plan. And uh, I would like to thank you, all my existing patrons. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. I would have never imagined I will have many people, that many people supporting the channel. Thank you so much, guys. I really, really appreciate it. Okay, so now the parts are clean and dried. So first, I'm going to treat a couple of parts in Epilam. That's a part that will have, will need to be oiled uh, a bit later on. So I just treat them in Epilam first and uh, dry them, obviously, after uh, after being treated. I just leave them in Epilam for like uh, 10, 20 seconds. We're going to dry them and we'll start the reassembly process. First, I'm cleaning the pivot where I remove Epilam on the, on the escape wheel and the pallet fork. And now I'm oiling the jewel. That's uh, balance, one of the balance jewels. So we do it obviously on both sides. And when I put a drop of oil of 90-10, just put back the chaton on top. And this will be ready to go back in place. So put the first one there on top of the balance. Just putting this spring. I really like this type of spring. I don't know why. I really, I really love this Jeja movement. And on the other side as well, where you have the spring and the screw that will keep it in place. And that's it. Both jewels are oiled and in place. I'm just tweaking a bit the spring. It was actually a bit too high, so it was not perfectly flat. So I just put it at the right height. And when it is, I will just tighten the screw there. That's it. Just to make sure to have a flat spring. Okay, we saw the balance there. I just it was the sorry the main spring assembly. It was rotating freely, so now I'm just it's just a, a check where I, I check the end check and it's rotating freely. And now I just put back the main spring, wind it back, and we'll be able to put it back in the barrel. Okay, perfect. Just unwinding, and I'm just going to remove the lever on top and that's it the main spring is wind so first gonna put a few grease i'm just putting a graphite grease there on the wall and a special grease from uh, 8200 80, on the bottom there just dropping the spring here we go drop of oil and we can place back the barrel arbor right in the center there Drop of oil as well on the top, and we close the lid. For use, I use uh, for this I use a special tool there. Just put it in the center, and by a gentle press, we click the lid in place. Perfect. Okay, we just reassemble first. You remember, like it was a crown wheel that was underneath this bridge. So we put it back together, so like that is done, and we can start after reassembly all the parts on the main plate. Always lubricating all the rotating parts, very, very important. Does it want to go? Here we go. Is it in place? Oh, not yet. <laughs> this one doesn't want to cooperate yet. That's it, it's in place, and we have this long screw there. That will keep this part obviously preventing from moving. Again, this screw doesn't want to cooperate. There we go, that's it. Perfect. That's done. And we can start assembling the parts on the main plate there. Beautiful, like again, and after cleaning, most of the time the movement are even more beautiful because yeah, when you when you put them sometime. Uh, we saw this movement, it was a bit of rust and uh, yeah, there is a bit of uh, yeah patina if you want on the movement, like a lot of dirt and when you clean them, they came out even 
shinier than when they came in. And look, look at this beauty. Love it. With the perlage, the perlage finish on the bottom, the Côte de Genève on the top. Wonderful movement. Like, I love Gégé Le Coute just for that. I don't know many movement or many calibers they have done because there is like a huge number of calibers, like from Gégé Le Coute. It's, it's crazy, actually. And, uh, but they are all beautiful, all beautiful. Okay, so now I assemble the barrel assembly there and just putting the center wheel there with this bridge on top. That's it, nice and secure with the screws. And assemble the train of wheel. Starting by the escape, the Gwondoni factory is, is tricky. And on this movement, like you have the train of wheel turning like counterclockwise if you want. And normally on a movement, it's turning like the other way. Like the, the, the train of wheel is, uh, it's, it's weird to work because you are used to like wheels going like, yeah, from one side and they are more on the right side if you want of the movement. And normally they are more on the left side. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's different. Okay. I'm putting the bridge on top there. Just tapping on the movement just ever so slightly, just to make sure everything falls into place in the jewels. And when everything is aligned, everything, everything is turning. That's it. All the wheels are connected, so everything is in place. I can secure it with the screws. Perfect. Okay, so we're moving dive side. I'm going to assemble the keyless work. Starting there with this pinion, which put some heavy grease on it. The clutch. And searching the winding stem through through the two parts. Setting lever that I'm screwing from the other side. In place, yeah, that's it. Perfect, it's working perfectly. And keeping the stem in place. I'm greasing everything, oiling all the pivot point there where I'm going to put the wheels later. So like that is done. And here we go, put the yoke. Again, like you can see me putting this blue grease, which is like an heavy grease because these parts are seeing a lot of friction because there will be tension between these parts. So that's why I use this heavy grease just to make sure like the parts don't wear too much between each other. And as well, when you operate, it's, it's smoother. Obviously, if it's greased, it's, uh, it's a lot smoother. And this beautiful spring that this yoke spring, I love it. Like compared to a standard uh, wire spring, like it's so nice, so elegant, this solution. Obviously a lot more complicated and a lot more expensive, I guess, to manufacture. But yeah, it's so nice. Okay, I'm putting the setting lever spring on top. Just make sure everything's aligned. And we put the screw. So what I like to do is like put the first one, not going to screw it fully, put the second one. And this one I'm going to screw it fully. Just make sure the spring is in place. And when it is, here we go, I screw it fully. Checking if everything is turning. Yeah, that looks good. Look, everything is working as it should. Just going to oil all the jewels from this side. Going to do the same thing on the other side. Perfect. And we can carry on the assembly with the pallet fork. Put it in place. Align it in the bottom jewel there. Putting the cock on top. Make sure everything's aligned. And again, to you, like, it's a different angle compared to another watch. And it makes it weird, actually, because you are used to, like, being the opposite direction. Okay, just putting a bit of a wind. Let's see if the fork is clicking. Yes, it does. It's clicking left and right. Perfect. Just going to oil the jewels out, out of the camera because it's very tricky to do it uh, under the under the camera. And uh, I can put now the balance assembly. You remember we already oiled the jewels from the balance assembly. So just putting it there on the bottom pivot, just finding the hole. Sometimes it's quite tricky. And now I'm rotating until find its place very gently putting in place 
if you want. Oh, that's it, it started. Perfect. We have a runner. Putting the screw and there we go. We, the balance is in place. Okay, so now we have a running movement. We can carry on by assembling the rest of the parts, which is now for the automatic system. So we have this part, remember, where the bumper come and uh, rotate on top of it on, on this jewel. Going to reassemble this sub assembly there. Again, oiling everything as it should. Putting the part there in the hole right through the center. Doesn't want to go there because, yeah, I think it's not in the hole. So if you like the video, I would really like if you please click the like button, subscribe, and the bell icon because I put a video uh, once a week so you will get a notification when you put a video. And as well, that will keep me motivated to put uh, new content. More subscriber I have, the happier I am. So thanks a lot for subscribing to the channel. Okay, put the screws. Very, very small screw, this uh, three screw there. The last one with my big finger in the middle. Actually, my finger is not big, but compared to the size of the of the parts, it, it looks a lot bigger. Okay, putting the click and arming the click with this uh, spring there that come in a groove. Okay, perfect. Was another click as well, you remember, on top of the mechanism. So first I'm gonna put this uh, spring in place. Again, using my plastic tool there, just to make sure it doesn't jump if anything goes wrong. Just put it in a groove. Yeah, that's it. There is a screw there that come and secure this spring, just to make sure it doesn't move, doesn't jump. And now I'm gonna put the click in place. And actually this uh, click is rotating around the screw that I'm gonna put there. And you see the screw, if you see just under the head, there is a flat part. And this part actually is where the, the click is rotating around. So I'm gonna put a drop of oil there. Even if I put a drop of oil inside, I'm just gonna put there one on a flat as well, flat surface. And that's it, perfect. Okay, so let's focus on a bumper there. You remember, broken, this part is broken and I managed to source a new part actually on uh, on eBay, pretty lucky. Um, you don't need to change everything, actually you just need to change this part, you see, which is uh, this, kind of, this arm, which is screwed there. So just going to remove it from the bumper, there we go. And here is a new one, you see, exactly the same part just putting in place and gonna just secure it with the two screw just to make sure it makes one with the bumper, with the heavy bumper. And if you never had a watch, a bumper watch, you should get definitely get one. It's a very, very, very strange feeling because when your watch is winding, actually you feel the bump like hitting the spring uh, compared to a other automatic watch. It's a, it's a great feeling. Like I love bumper movement. Okay, so I just do a quick clean on the dial especially on the numbers, which were a bit dirty. Um, just a, a gentle clean, not too much uh, on the on the, on the the dial. And yeah, the number looks a bit better. I will just do a gentle polish as well uh, with my uh, version pen. And okay, we can carry on putting the hour wheel. And you remember for the broken pin under the, under the dial. I'm just gonna use a stick there and this will keep the dial in place, actually glue it on this side. On the other side, there is a, a dial fit, so that's not a problem. And I just prefer to do that rather than putting the screw on the dial. It doesn't look good to be fair, the screw, so I'm just gonna put it in place, align it the best I can. Um, yeah, and if you want to have uh, any description and uh, any information on the tools that I'm using in this video, I will put some link down below, uh, obviously not all the tools. So if you have any question, please just put them in a, in a comment section for if you have any question on the tool, I would be more than happy to, to reply. Okay, just make sure the dial it's nice and center. And when it is, 
I will just just check in there, just press it in place, and it will be yeah glued from one side. And on the other side, I will just secure the die fit screw with uh, with the screw, obviously. Gentle polish on the hands, our hand and minute hand, not a hard polish, just a gentle clean. And uh, before I put back the the hand, I will just focus a bit on the on the dial on the case, sorry, which is very dirty. And the crystal, I'm gonna put a new one because it's scratched pretty heavily and and dirty and uh, and cracked as well. Just gonna remove as much dirt as I can with this piece of pegwood and put everything into the ultrasonic machine just to remove and clean the clean this, uh, this part there. And you see, I managed to remove quite a lot of dirt on my bench already. And the rest will be removed in the ultrasonic machine. Okay, putting back the hand. So first we put the, our hand. There we go. Just align it to midnight, putting the minute hand. And actually I managed, I did not catch it on video, but I managed to source uh, second hand because the second hand was missing on his watch. And I put a blue one. I love the blue blue hand you will see at the end. Okay, so now that the case is clean, just like I said, putting a brand new crystal. So for this, I use my version press. Just putting the crystal there. And I'm just going to press it a tiny bit. And actually, if you want, the crystal become a tiny bit smaller. And that's allowed me to uh, put the case in place. And when I'm going to release the tension, the crystal is going to expand inside the case. There we go. And that's it. We have a crys the crystal installed, a brand new crystal installed, installed inside the case. Okay, you can see there with the blue hand, the blue second hand, the woman is beating. Putting him back into this case and look at this movement. Wow, the color is so nice. Putting back the crown there with the winding stem. You see, securing it with the screw there. We have a clamp here that keeps the movement in place. Tricky to put. Just need to put it in a groove there. Here we go. Perfect. And I'm going to secure it with a screw. And like this, the movement cannot move anymore. It will be secure in this uh, beautiful case. And the only thing we have left to do is uh, assemble back the automatic system. Now we have repaired the broken parts. First, a drop of oil on the two pivot point there. We're going to put the, the parts. We go first, we are putting this one and now putting the bumper. And obviously, every time with a bumper movement, you want to adjust it. That uh, you can see, you have a, a rack. The pinion is like uh, uh, like against a rack, and you want the movement of the bumper to be in the center of the rack. So you can see that I'm uh, up. It co it's coming off the rack. So I'm just going to move it to the other side. Obviously, need to be because now I'm uh, one of the extremity of the bumper. If you want. And I'm just going to move it to the other side. And yeah, you can see now I have the full course of the bumper on the rack. Perfect. And to secure that, I need to put this beautiful gold bridge. Obviously, it's not made of gold. I wish, but uh, it's not. But this beautiful gold bridge on top. We're going to align the two parts, the bumper and this wheel there on these jewels. And we will have the bumper, the bumper movement, which will be fully assembled. And the watch as well, couple of steps after this, but it's getting pretty, pretty good. And obviously, like the question is, is it running well? That's a one million dollar question. Putting the two screws, first one, and the second one now. There we go. Perfect. Oiling the jewels on the top like we did at the bottom. Very important. Just putting a new gasket, a new O-ring actually. Just make sure we lubricate it before in money coat. Well, you see it's not a, a diver watch, but important to put like 
new seals and new o-rings just to make sure like dirt or moisture doesn't come into the watch because you see the damage on the bumper was caused by moisture because it was rusted and when it's rusted the parts become weaker and they can break and we put the case back which is actually snap on like snap into place and the watch is done when to demagnetize the watch put it on a time grapher and you can see there the result yeah i'm pretty pleased with two, uh, 280 the beater is just below one which i like to to do on this uh, watch and the rate plus three plus four seconds plus two seconds a day which is really good for, for a watch from this age. So we have a, a nice watch, much better than when it came with a second hand running without any uh, broken parts anymore. And which is keeping good time as well for, for this age. A lovely Gégère Le Coutre. Look at this beautiful watch. I hope you like the restoration and I see you next time for my next project. Bye bye.